slow scan. I almost said single. Let's talk about one of the most exciting things going on in amateur radio. This is going to be happening in March. The Farm 2 mission. This is a private space launch with four to be astronauts specialized in polar science. And this is a special launch because this launch is going over the polar orbits. And I'm let's just talk about that now. Normally, when a rocket launches, it takes an easterly trajectory because the Earth is rotating to the east. And that's why the time zones in the east are much earlier than our central time zone. So when we go to the east, we gain an hour because it's an hour sooner than the sun rises. So that means when a rocket launches off the Earth, it has that momentum already granted to it, and it's much easier to add that momentum and to keep going and to get more momentum so it can get an orbit. However, this is now a polar orbit. So what it's going to have to do, and we're looking at Florida because it's going to be launching in Florida. I think it's going to be launching in Florida. Or it could be California, but we're going to use Florida, for example, here. It's going to be taking off and then changing its trajectory to a nor polar orbit. So it's going to take off and go probably, if I was from Florida, I'm going to guess up because that's the closest pole. And then it's going to be rotating around the Earth. And if we zoom out a little bit, it will be launching from Florida, going up and going over the poles and coming back down the side and continue to do that. And that is going to be our orbit of the craft. And this is a unique orbit because not a lot of spacecrafts, it, even manned spacecrafts, has done this before in the past. So this is going to be a unique experience for a lot of science. So this is their webpage, F2.com, and it's the first human flight around the perf polar region. See, I was right. And it has this cool swoop-in Star Wars um, text. And, and here is an example of the craft going um, over the polar plane. There's going to be four astronauts on this launch. Most notably for our amateur radio operators, Robea Ruge. I hope I'm saying that right, Robea. I, if I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm American. We're, and I'm Frank. So that just means everything's going to be pronounced wrong. <laughs> Robea Ruge is pursuing her PhD in Norway. What? That is so awesome. But she's also a licensed amateur radio operator in Norway. Her call sign is Lima Beta 9 Norway, Japan. I said that bad phonetics. I'm sorry. But she also has a amateur radio call sign here in the States. That is Kila Delta 3 Alpha India Delta. Whoa, that is so cool. And thank you for getting a U.S. amateur radio license. Oh, that's, ah, uh, I, I, I want to meet her and talk to her. And ooh, if, if we could set that up, y'all, that would be amazing. I switched websites. This website here is pharma2ham.org. And this one's being put on by the Aries. That's Aries Amateur Radio ISS. We'll talk more about them in a bit. But a part of her mission that is she's doing for us is she's going up with an amateur radio and gonna be transmitting back to Earth when she's over populated areas, slow scan TV images. And those are what kind of we did in the past videos and I'm gonna be talking more about that. If you wanted to participate in this competition, it is a competition, but you don't have to be a part of it. I'm gonna tell you how to just receive the images later. But if you wanna participate and do this as part of a STEM activity, the rules are on the bottom of the farm2ham.com page and how to participate guide, a Discord server link, and the sign-up form. To participate, teams need to be from three to five in an educational institute. Um, you can't submit your images on your own. This is part of a STEM project so that we want kids to learn about space and ham radio and all this other stuff and learn together as a team. And then you need to register your team 
and they show you how to do that on this form. The competition will consist of three different images and each image is broken up into four different parts. These images are transmitted over the life of the mission and while it's over populated areas on the states, you are encouraged to download these images and submit them. Ooh, I'm just, I'm gonna be doing this just to see if I can get all the sets. Um, I hope, I hope I could do this. And the major group behind this, as I noted earlier, is the Amateur Radio ISS. They're the ones uh, putting this mission together, and they also have a lot of other STEM programs. And this is the group that is responsible for putting together a lot of the ISS contacts and uh, partnering with schools to help get kids interested in STEM and amateur radio. Now it's time for the fun part. Slow Scan TV. Slow Scan TV has been a part of the amateur radio operations for a long time, and it is the process of transmitting an image over the amateur radio bands. Unlike Fast Scan TV, Fast Scan TV is where you transmit video and it's moving and it's kind of like what I'm doing, but Slow Scan TV is just a image and it takes longer. Doesn't mean the quality is better, but it takes longer. This is the wiki on how it does it. And talking about, uh, uh, it's actually sending, and in the video I shot for Field Day, we can see it sending each line of information one at a time, pixel by pixel by pixel by pixel, and that takes a while to achieve. That's okay, we got time to receive the image. The easiest way to do this is to have a decoding app on your phone. The app I use in Android is Robo36. This is a free application that decodes majority of all the different formats you can send slow scan images in. And it is free and you just use your phone and you simply hold up your phone to the radio speaker. This is my radio, pretend it's like my radio, but uh, you hold it up to the speaker and then just wait to the image to finish downloading. This app uh, is easy to use, plus it auto detects the format of the image so you don't have to tell it it is this type of image or that type of image or that type of image for the decode it auto detects the format it is great and easy to use i've used it on my phone on both on hf and uhf and vhf uh, all it's got to do is listen to the sound and i'm going to be demonstrating that here in a minute however for the apple folks out there um no shame but there is a application, it is SSTV Slow Scan TV, and it is $4. I can't talk on how good it is because I don't have an Apple phone and I haven't used it, but that is your other option on Apple. The frequency this is gonna be operating on at this moment in time as publishing of this video is gonna be 437.5. 5, 5 megahertz that's the 440 band let's start talking about the equipment as in radios you need to do this you don't need anything fancy any HT will work a Balfane will work an Explorer X1 will work and then your any tone will work even your fancy Yezu radios will work so just anything to receive on the uh, 440 megahertz first we're gonna look at on how to use your antenna on the radio to uh, get the signal first you want to find what direction is south then we're going to line the antenna horizontal to the ground and a horizontal to the south direction this is going to give us a polarization that is horizontal to the ground and also flat on to dragon capsule now as the dragon capsule is coming over the horizon we want to keep this orientation perfectly perpendicular to them or perfectly horizontal to them so that we can intercept the signal you do not want to have it straight up because then this is going to give you a vertical polarization. This is how we set up most of our stuff here on the ground because we want the signal to radiate that direction and that direction. But since we're going to want to capture a signal coming off the dragon capsule as it orbits the earth, we want it horizontal. Your more sophisticated setups, and this is probably what I'm going to recommend, going to give you the best quality of signal, is going to be using a Yagi antenna. 
like this aero antenna I have. I only have the 440 elements on it just because it's easier to move through the house. We don't really need the two meter elements on this use case, but then you're gonna use this to point to the satellite as it goes over or point to our dragon capsule. Ooh, this is gonna be so much fun as it goes over the sky. And again, for polarization, you just rotate it with your wrist and then this other end is connected to your radio. This antenna will work great for you. you also have the elk logarithmic antenna. I do have that antenna. I haven't gotten it out and built it yet, but this one I just had readily on hand. But if you want to do a more fun and, and STEM um, project, I highly recommend building your antenna. This antenna is a tape measure two meter 440 Yagi antenna. This antenna is easy to build because this is just a tape measure measure and you can cut it out to the correct lengths and um, this is super easy to use super easy to build majority of equipment you need you can get at Home Depot minus the cable that you need for it but everything else is just parts you buy at Home Depot uh, I built this particular antenna with Steve on a live stream I've got that popping up uh, somewhere and these are super easy to build and once they're built you simply just hook them onto the radio and that's all you need you're not going to be transmitting that's just this is it you just need to listen and same thing with this you point it at the dragon capsule as it's going over the sky and uh, you, if for polarization you just rotate your wrist that easy I brought on the satellite master that I know Robert to talk about Doppler effect and how to utilize that to get those perfect pictures go ahead Robert Hey, Frank. Yeah, man, I got you. Okay, Doppler effect. What is it? First of all, it is the observed difference in frequency between a moving object, in this case, a satellite, and the observer, you. So I think a really great example of this is, you know, when you're on the highway, you're, you're rolling down the highway, and all of a sudden you hear that motorbike come out of nowhere. That is an example of the Doppler effect. So now that we know what it is, let's talk about it in terms of this very specific use case, this Fram to Ham SSTV event. In this event, the images are gonna be transmitted from the capsule on 70 centimeters. Now Doppler effect has a greater impact on the frequency, the higher you go in frequency. So if this was, being transmitted over two meters, we wouldn't have to worry about it so much. We have to account for it and we have to deal with that. So let's go to the computer and take a look at how we deal with the Doppler effect for this event. Okay, I'm gonna use Chirp to help illustrate the Doppler effect. And I'm going to show you how you could program your radio for this specific Fram to Ham event. So if we look here on the screen, you can see I've got 21 presets. Eris suggests that you use a frequency step of one kilohertz to maximize the signal quality when you're trying to receive these SSTV signals. If we take a look here, the published frequency for the capsule or for the transmission is 437.550 megahertz. And this is what we're calling our center point of the pass, or this is the time of closest approach. And if we look at that frequency after the decimal, it is 550. Now, the pass is going to start frequency number one here, and you can see that we are actually 10 kilohertz higher than the frequency of the transmission itself. And that's because on the 440 downlink, you need to start listening 10 kilohertz higher because that's where the frequency is going to be observed at the point of observation, again, that being you, than the frequency itself. So here you can see the first memory channel is 437.560. And that's when we're gonna have acquisition of signal or acquisition of satellite. Now you can see here that I have a memory preset or a programmed preset for one kilohertz clear up 
to that TCA or that time of closest approach. Now, once that orbiting body passes that time of closest approach, we're gonna see the frequency start to decrease, right? So that frequency is higher as it approaches us on the downlink. And then once we cross over that time of closest approach, we see that frequency start to decrease. So I have one kilohertz steps listed here. And the idea is that as that capsule moves through the sky, you're changing your memory preset to stay in tune, so to speak, with the transmission from the capsule. Now, I also have a couple of other items here just to reinforce some of this. I created a programming set here for the Baofang radio, right? This is a very popular radio and many people have these laying around and you may have one of these and wanna try to receive these signals. The interesting thing about the Baofang though is it does not do one kilohertz steps. It can only do 2.5 kilohertz steps. So instead of having 21 presets, we've got 17 presets. Just for the fun of it, I've created a five kilohertz step programming file. And this is commonly what I use when using a voice repeater over a satellite or the International Space Station. Now, Eris suggests that this will not give you a very good quality uh, image, and they very well may be right, but I'm gonna try it during this event anyhow. So I will make these files available and I'll put the, uh, the web address here on the screen so you guys can grab those if you're interested. All right, Frank, that's all I got. Back to you. We have our antenna ready. We got our radio that is hooked up to the antenna, but for easy demonstrations, I'm just gonna use this one right here. We have our app on the um, phone, and all we need to do is now listen for the signal. And once we get a strong signal, there it is. We hold our phone to the speaker and it starts decoding that image. And that's all we got to do is just continuously point the antenna at the capsule as we're receiving it and just wait for the image to be done downloading. It is that easy. After you finish downloading all the images and um, built, hopefully you built your own antenna, um, you save the images off to from the phone and to the computer and follow the submission steps to the uh, uh, article I linked before and is that easy you're entered you, you you submit it that is awesome and we hopefully we learned a lot by building this hopefully we learned a lot by talking about orbits and launch trajectories and, and all the cool information about this project I just want to say thank you to the uh, amateur radio ISS group for putting this together and um, this this is this is awesome I can't wait to participate as a recording March 1st-ish is gonna be the launch window. Um, and I already noted the frequency. Please check the website for this because um, with any launch, things can get delayed easily and any information I give you right now will be out of date. So check the website for more information. Y'all, this has been awesome and amazing and uh, wonderful. And I can't wait for this project to happen. I can't wait for the launch. Thank y'all for watching. As always, I need to back up. Woo! Go forth and conquer. Keep recording. Yeah? Okay. Let's straighten it up. It's got a little catawonky over the years. Yeah, after the fact. Uh, sorry, I cheated for transmitting it. I wanted to do it over the ear, and uh, I just couldn't figure out in a timely manner recording this how to do it, so I just used the computer. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to let y'all know. If I figure out how to do it, just hook it to the two meter and I'll post it somewhere. Adios, y'all.